are back at the engine. Um, this is the front of the engine here. I'll try and keep you in frame and all if I can. Oh, we'll see how we go with that. Right now, we have a new timing cover. The, the back timing cover to fit. And it's an aftermarket one. And it should sit, should sit in somewhere around there. All the bolt holes seem to line up okay. So that seems to be looking pretty good. It's got a couple of little couple of little dags here. I might just run a, um, a little 3M pad over them just to save any, um, any swarth getting into the engine. So we'll do that and I'll have a bit of a look and this gasket. Excuse my big head. This gasket sits up in there nicely. All the holes line up. I'll check if the holes line up before you get too excited with anything. Now, I'm going to use Loctite number three. I use aviation cement for this sort of thing. Um, don't use silicon based products. Not for this, you have a gasket, so look, probably grease is as good as any, but I, I don't know, I've, I've just always liked to do this on the front cover here. It's a bugger of a job to get it back at it if it's something goes wrong and gets a bit of a leak. So mainly around the edge. Oh, just like painting at school, isn't it? About as tidy as mine was. We can clean some of this stuff off later. That chink chink you can hear, that's my phone in my pocket. That means our Queensland Tractor Spares eBay store is selling parts while I'm home here playing. Oh, how do we do it for the price? Oh, right, I'll just put a bit across there. Just to help hold the gasket, really, so. This can just hold in there. Now I've washed all the bolts up. I've spent the morning, I've got dishpan hands, I've been spending the morning washing the bolts. Bolts and nuts and I've, I went to do the video on the clutch and the um, some of the nuts are a bit buggered on the clutch and I didn't have any here so I've got to order some in. And... Right, so that should sit there nicely for us for a little while. I've got the pistons covered up, it was so windy here yesterday that I've wrapped, a, wrapped the whole engine up. So I'll just show you a little bit of this and we'll go away as it's dust. But main thing is use a blue pad. So look, I'll go away from the engine and I'll tidy up any of these little burrs here and give this timing cover a good wash and we'll come back. Well look, magic. Didn't take long at all. Like 10 seconds, but probably in 20 minutes, half an hour. You don't really want to do your first oil change and see little bits of rubbish here and there, do you? It's just no. No sense to that. Okay, a bit more brown poop.
particularly around the edges where it can make an oil leak later. There you go, that's going to do. Rembrandt. I don't think I'll ever become a famous painter. Unless you want to see race horses. These haven't ever raced down here, this one's winning. Bolt there would be good. One over here. Yeah, make sure you have the flat washer with the spring, and these are the bolts with the half thickness heads on them too. I haven't put the studs in here yet for the injection pump. Probably catch up with that job a bit later on. As with everything, get everything started. Get them all started and then we can um, start tightening them up once they're all, all started because yeah, we can move it around and do a few things like that. I need an apprentice to do all this washing for me, I think. I had one of them and he painted me tractor and I suspect him. Anyway, not to worry. Starting to look like an engine once you get a few bits back on. At the moment I've got number one piston up and I've got the key down here straight up. So that's top dead centre on number one piston. So that's where we'll start to time everything once we get the timing cover here bolted on. That's if I ever get all these bolts back in. I'll probably nod off before they're all in. I don't know what we do if there's one left over. Spare parts.
this is one of these little fellas. I think it's a lock tab for down the bottom. And I do have a screw left over after joking about it. So we'll grab the old timing cover and we'll just have a little bit of a look and see. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So we're right to go. We did have some underneath in here yet, so... We won't hit the panic button just yet. Now, another thing at this stage I like to do, there's a pin here and there's a pin, there's a hole here for your oil supply for your idler gear. And I thought it would be prudent to, before we tighten the, before we tighten this right up, just to make sure that was all lined up properly. Um, that has an oil hole here, so that locates it so the oil hole lines up. So we'll just people have said how come I haven't got a nut gun? Well nut guns are bloody noisy. I do have them, but I'm just starting around the centre of the housing here and working my way out to the outside. You can see the glue come up through there a little bit. That little squeaks my chair. Okay, so we'll just run random on there. Okay, 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
and 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay, job done. Now let's start getting some timing gears. Oh, one thing I do like to do around now is get a bit of petrol on a rag and where some of this gasket goo gets around places, tidy it up. I don't know, you probably don't need to do that. Lovely, a little bit on the outside here. Then later on, any gasket go around the outside here, um, or if the gasket sticks out at all, we'll easily run a Stanley knife or a, a craft knife around and clean it all up. So, just another wipe, just because we can. Okay, let's start timing this engine. Now, I'm trying to bring the camera around. We might go down lower. That's zoomed out as far as we can go, so we're going to have to bring the camera back a little. Okay, so to start the timing of this engine, I've washed a few bits and pieces up. And we need to start, we can't get the flywheel on because we're in an engine stand. We need to start with the key up and you can just see the little mark on this tooth itself. So when we look at the idler gear here, we see a tooth, we see a mark on a tooth, we see a mark on a tooth and we see a mark between teeth. That is the one that goes there because it's between the teeth. So what we need to do is put a liberal amount of your favourite lube around here. I'm using Maury's, that's just what I like to do. Or engine oil, just, just whatever you feel like using. So long as it's got some oil on there for initial start-up. So we check for the pip centre punch mark on the valley. See this one's on the peak, on the gear, on the gear here. So you make sure that's lined up. Well, one tooth out there. So we need to come around that one tooth. A little bit of backlash there. Look, they said, um, I think about six to ten thousand backlash. That's probably a little much what we have there, but um, look, it's not going to worry us at all. Now, to hold that gear in place. We should never need to undo that gear again at this stage. So this is the washer and that was the lock tab that held it on and this is the washer. We'll clean those up. And I do have a new lock tab over the back so I'll just race through and get that.
And while we're racing around, I've got a three quarter spanner. Which won't be any good because it's 13 16. God, it's hard to get good help. I have to put myself on notice, give myself a warning, I think. Now, aftermarket tab kit, that's going to need to be popped down because it can't just sit there. That's no good. I'll fix that and I'll be back. Right, I've done a bit of a job on the lock tab. That lock tab wasn't within a bull's roar of being right. A little bit of lube around, around the thrust surface. So this is actually pulling the gear and that peg back tight. Beautiful. Now there's a torque for that. Look it up if you want. I'm just doing it up tight. Lovely. So that's not going to come off, that's fine. Now we have our camshaft here. Now if you remember, I wasn't real pleased we have some, some scows, deep marks on here where the fuel lift pump goes. A few marks through the side, looks like a, a knockout here. So we have a new cam for it. Now, this cam gear has to go on the right way. So we have to work out how to do that. Right, we have the cam sitting in here with the lines lined up. Now we'll loosen the gear off here. Now this gear could go on in any one of three places but we know when we set the engine up we have to have the timed on number one. So how do we know we're timed on number one? Well if we have a look at the cam itself I'll just clean a bit of rubbish out of there 
to fire on number one, our two cam lobes are flat like that. And if we have a look around the corner at that there now, this one's flat and that one's flat. So we know we're on number one, or firing on number one. Now, I'll just lift you up a little bit for this exercise. So if we take this cam out, and we put heaps and heaps of oil and lube and all sorts of good things on this new cam shaft, Oh, that's good stuff, isn't it? And as we slide the cam into its ball, we have to make sure that we're firing on number one. <coughs> oh, me! Now, another, another little telltale is where we have number one here, on the new cam, there's a little flat. So, we can't go far wrong. So at the moment, we have it firing on number one. Now if we bring the gear back to where our mark is here, that's our little dot, and we have it firing on number one, That's not right. We have to bring it round so it lines up here. So if we slide that in now, and line the teeth up, we have to be in the right spot. I'll just start these bolts momentarily. So if we slide him out and just check, we are on number one. We do have the two flats across. Teeth in there, line this dot up. Our dots are lined up and we're firing on number one. So we should be able to nip these bolts up. Now there may be a little movement back and forth from the bolts. Not much. It, look, they are very snug. I'll try and do them up evenly. Now we have a nice new cam in our engine. That's back home. That's home. And that's home, so we'll just do a final tensioning on those bolts so we've got to be right we can't be anywhere else we have the cam gear with the key upwards lining up with the little mark there we have the two dots there lined up if we look down the top 
Both cam lobes are away from us, so that means it can be firing on number one. We have number one piston up. We have to be right. But there's another gear. There's another one goes in here. And that's our injection pump timing gear. Now, if you remember when we were bugging around with the engine when we pulled it apart, I was showing you that it's not possible once this is in to, to turn that gear in here. So we have a little pip there that you can just see and the timing mark here and it is not possible to shift that. So what we may do now is there's a Welsh plug in behind the fuel injection pump in, in here. I might put the Welsh plugs in, we'll put the injection pump on, we'll put the studs into the back of the housing here, put the injection pump on and nip this up and we won't tighten the injection pump right up because when we actually get the flywheel on and we check our timing marks from when we came off before, um, we may have to move it left or right just a little bit. So we might um, roll the engine over and we'll go and put a few Welsh plugs in. Well we have the old timing cover here and what we want is these bolts. So how do we get them? Well let's just try we'll screw one of the nuts on that was holding the injection pump on we'll screw another one on next to it it's just double nutting that's not what you thought double nutting is, did you? Now, we tighten them against each other and there we go that was very easy. We undo them again, we try the next one. Double nutting. Beautiful. In the past I've actually pulled injection pumps apart for off tractors and these studs have come out. And we're not going to have ours come out. We're going to buff them all up. And we're going to lock tight them in. Because when you have a look at the other side. Yep. Same on this one as on the other one. They're actually through holes. So there we go, there's our bolts out. One, two, three. We'll go and wash them, buff them, do all that sort of stuff and come back. Right, we have the back of the timing cover here. I have my Where's Wally shirt here, cleaning the ball. And then, when I bring you around to the front here, and remove that timing gear, you'll see that the holes are all the way through. So, what we're going to do here is, the same as we did taking them out. I've washed them up, cleaned them up, but, this time, they're getting a little bit of a lock tight. Whoa. Bit more than a little bit there, but anyway. And once again, just double nut them back on. It's a nice easy way of doing things. I've got the camera. <laughs> Right, just about in the road.
That seems to be okay. A little bit of wind starting to blow in the front door and a few trucks going past, but that's just what we have to put up with. Lock him up. Come up nice and firm. They almost come out the other side, but not quite. And the last one. This is a Bearcoat product, R24S. It's for bolts 5 16th of an inch and over. It's good stuff. Very affordable. If you've got a Bearcoat dealer near you, grab some. It's a knockoff of Loctite, I believe, but yeah, of a Loctite that being the brand name. But I can't fault it. I reckon it's good gear. I can sell that to my customers for cheaper than I could actually buy some of the Loctite products. There we go. I'll get Where's Wally to wipe him up with his sleeve? I bet his missus gets up him, getting his clothes dirty like that. Okay, we'll pop a couple of welsh plugs in. There's two on this side. I'll pop them in just so we don't forget about them and put other stuff in the road. <laughs> 